Hello everyone, back again to today's uh, second video. So we're going to have a look at weather for the next week to 10 days. Well, today's second video, uh, which will take us to around the 10th of February. So we're going into the first 10 days of the final month of winter 2019-2020 uh, with the week 10 day video update today. And of course, we'll be able to extend out beyond that, the extended GFS and ECL Ensemble. So we're going to run a couple of weeks um, and uh, also, we'll have CFSB2 for the next four weeks next month as well. So that pretty much takes us through the whole of February. Weekend forecast has been uh, released, of course. It's also on Saturday with your weekend look ahead. Quite a changeable week uh, coming up. So uh, starting very mild and quite unsettled. Then uh, sort of a colder, drier into the around middle of the week, and then it goes perhaps quite stormy uh, by next weekend. Have a look at the uh, weekend forecast and see what's going on there. Uh, we've got Terry Scully's February forecast coming up uh, tonight. I'll tell you what's happening at gazwellviz.com tomorrow um, at the end of the video. I'm going to start off with the central England temperature. Now, uh, there's been a bit of a delay on getting January's finalised uh, number in. So, at the moment, this is saying uh, 6.5 here, provisional to yesterday, 31st of January. Uh, that's a normally 2.7 degrees. It's not the finalised number there. It's only provisional. Um, so there's probably going to be a downward correction on that. We don't have the finalised number yet. Normally, before this page is updated, they would issue the finalised number at, uh, at Hadley, uh, the UK Met Office. But um, they haven't uh, They haven't issued that finalised number yet. I think we're probably going to have to wait until uh, Monday. There's been some sort of delay on it. Um, but I would think they'll uh, probably release it either uh, sort of later today, tomorrow, or more likely, I would have thought, now on Monday. We're going to come in somewhere in the low sixes, I would have thought. So there's nearly always a downward correction. Maybe this will be one of those months that doesn't have a downward correction. But there's nearly always a downward correction. So I suppose we'll probably finish up somewhere around 6.2, maybe 6.3, something like that as our finalised number. A very, very mild uh, January indeed. And we go to the CT page at gazlovies.com. We've got every month CT. Uh, number right way back to 1659. It's the uh, longest and most reliable temperature record anywhere uh, on Earth. Although, of course, the further back you go, the more unreliable it gets. So once you're back into 1600s, oh, it's just sort of an indication of what the conditions were like back then. But it is very unreliable as you go that far back. But anyway, we scroll down through the, uh, through the years and through the uh, decades, and uh, we come down to uh, the latest year, so this of course is 2019, I've put 2020 in there, but we haven't got any finalised numbers yet for 2020. Um, so, uh, of course, we had uh, December coming out at 5.8, that was a bit milder uh, than average, although it was our coolest um, December since 2017. Uh, but when we uh, have January's number placed in here, that will come out somewhere in the low 60s. The last time we had a January milder than this was back in 2008. That one came out at 6.6. Uh, .6. Where is it? There it is, 2008, 6.6. .6. So uh, this is going to be the mildest January that we've had for, what's that, 12 years. It's going to be the mildest January uh, for 12 years when we get the finalised number. It won't beat 2008. I think it's very unlikely uh, to beat 2008. It certainly won't beat the year before that, 2007, which had a January CT of 7.0. So there were a pair of very mild Januaries for 2007 and 2000. And eight as well, and a pair of very mild winters actually. 20, 2006, 2007, 2007, 2008 were both two, uh, two very mild back to back winters. So there's no chance of beating 2007. And I think it's unlikely that we'll beat 2008 either. So I think we'll be somewhere just under uh, 2008. So it'll turn out to be the mildest January for the CT anyway uh, for uh, 12 years. And then, of course, we'll be waiting for the UK wide temperature data to come in. For February, we had a very mild February last year at 6.7. Uh, so, I mean, it's possible we might uh, get to that again for this February, but I would, I think it's more likely that this February will probably come in a bit underneath 
2019. But we shall see uh, about that. And overall, we have had some very mild Februarys uh, this decade. So we had uh, 2011 at 6.4. We had 2014 at 6.2. Had 2017 at 6.1. And then we had 2019 at 6.7. In between, some colder Februarys as well. So 2012, 2013 were both quite cold with temperatures in the freeze. Of course, we had 2018 uh, with a February CT of 2.9, really quite a cold month. That was our coldest February that we'd had since um, 2010, uh, I think. So uh, that, of course, contained the beach from the east at the end of month. So it had been very up and down uh, with February uh, through um, the past decade. Anyway, of course, we're into a new decade now, into 2020. So the past decade uh, was rather up and down uh, with the CT. We may get another exceptionally mild February uh, for this year and come out close to, uh, to 2019. But I would like for the front, it's more likely to be a little bit under that. But we shall see anyway. It's early days uh, for uh, discussing what February has in store, of course. So, guys, whether these February forecasts will be released on Monday, uh, by the way. Uh, so, unsettled weather. Wesley is going to continue through the first half of February. This, of course, is where we left off with the weekend uh, forecast. The Wesley's come back by the uh, coming weekend. We're into quite stormy conditions, potentially. And beyond that, it looks like Wesley's are set to last two. So, these are the 500 millibar height and only flow charts from the Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. Uh, which takes us to the 10th of February, of course. We've got the ECMWF on the top. The GFS, which we'll have a look in a moment, is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in the absolute high pressure and low pressure. I've been moved around by objectively running above. Red so it's high pressure, blue to low pressure. You can see what the ECM is doing in the week to 10 day. Time frame has this deep trough of low pressure with those blue colours around Greenland and Iceland. It has a strong ridge of high pressure from the Azores in towards Spain and then over towards central parts of Europe. Just a, a continuation of a pattern that we've had all winter, really. Very strong jet stream coming across the Atlantic. That's indicated by those tight lines there. Really, really strong jet stream blasting across the Atlantic into uh, Europe. Um, so it's going to be very, very uh, unbelievable settled as we go through to the second week of the month i think we could well find ourselves in for a little bit of an atlantic onslaught and a little bit of a battering the uh, GFS is very similar as well with the above average heights again in the middle of the Atlantic and also the trough of low pressure in the North Atlantic around Greenland and Iceland. Strong jet stream comes across the Atlantic into uh, the west of Europe. So again, that looks really unsettled, potentially quite stormy as well. It will be mild at times because it's all driving in the Atlantic but actually the air is originally from quite a long way north in the Atlantic so that does allow potentially for uh, some cold zonality and cold zonality particularly affects northern uh, and northwestern parts of the country so it's a sort of thing <coughs> excuse me it's sort of thing that can deliver Quite a bit of snow uh, for the Scottish mountains. Uh, but down across uh, lowland southern England, it's quite rare to get much in the way of snow from uh, cold zonality. You just tend to get a uh, colder variety of rain as opposed to a milder variety of rain if a wind is coming up from the Azores. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to the Wolverhampton today in the West Midlands. The red line is 30 year upper air temperature for Wolverhampton. So we're starting off a little bit on the cool side uh, at the moment. Going to go mild tomorrow, very mild actually tomorrow. Been a bit of a cold snap Monday, Tuesday to Wednesday. Uh, and there will be some night frost involved with that, which is something we haven't had a great deal of this winter. Second half of the coming week goes much milder again and into next weekend. And then beyond that, as we go through into the second week of February up to the middle part of the month, essentially we're close to average, but there is a lot of up and down going on there. So that's indicative of uh, zonal westerlies where we get warmer and cooler and warmer and cooler uh, sectors alternating uh, with one another. Precipitation quite a lot of dry weather to come uh, through the first week of February for Wolverhampton. Again, it's going to be a little bit of rain overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. But once that gets out of the way, we basically dry until the end of the coming week. Beyond that, though, very unsettled as we go through the second week of February, associated, of course, with that zonal weather. 
Temperature anomalies from the 1st to the 9th of February, a little bit mild average, but not as mild as it has been through most of this winter, actually. So this is one of the cooler uh, weeks that we've had so far this winter. Uh, just a little bit above average. Most parts of Europe looking very mild, uh, of course. Whoops, there we go. Precipitation anomalies from the 1st to the 9th of February. More or less dry than average in most parts of England, where it's a little bit wetter than average for West Parts of Scotland. Expect these to trend wetter, these charts, uh, next week. That's how the GFS is looking for Tuesday. We've got quite a cold northwesterly wind on Tuesday. And then we build this ridge of high pressure in, which will settle things down and give us some overnight frost. That ridge is already starting to slip southwards by uh, Thursday. And then by Friday, it collapses into Central Europe. Low pressure comes back in from off the Atlantic. And then here we go into next weekend, turning very unsettled. Deep low pressure out to the north and west. When you see the purple and pink colours turning up on these charts, uh, around Green and Iceland, look out, you're normally in for battering, and that's what this is showing. Gale force winds sweeping across the country next Sunday, 9th of February, and probably a band of heavy rain too. Once that gets out of the way, we're going to this cold northwesterly. Uh, so this is like the cold zonal flow, cold zonality. The air originates from eastern Canada and Greenland. It's modified greatly by a very long sea trek across the Atlantic, but nevertheless, it does uh, bring air cold enough for snow uh, to the north, and particularly to the Scottish mountains. Further south, you just tend to get quite a lot of cold rain. Occasionally, you can get snow in the south from cold zonality, um, but it's quite unusual. To, you know, I remember there was a bit of a snowstorm across southern England in the first couple of days of March 1995, for example. That came from a uh, from a cold zonal flow in an area of low pressure, took a bit of a southerly track and engaged with that cold zonal flow. And maybe February 1990, which was exceptionally mild winter, February 99, I think, had some snow across southern parts of England from cold zonality. So occasionally you can get snow even down to lowland southern England from cold zonality. But it's something we associate more with snow in the north and can be particularly good for Scottish ski resorts. So if anyone is off for a, uh, a holiday up to Scotland skiing um, during February, you could be in luck with this cold zonal weather. Uh, that's Tuesday, uh, day 10, Tuesday 11th of February. Uh, another battering for England and Wales of the gale or severe gale force winds, another band of heavy rain sweeping across the country, probably cold enough for snow again up in the north. Then we're back into those cold northwesterlies again on Wednesday, the 12th of February, uh, just beyond day 10. Into the more extended range, the GFS tries to raise high pressure down across uh, Spain, tries to drag up some milder air from the southwest, and we just carry on really into the middle part of the month with low pressure continuing to rattle in from off the Atlantic. And now the jet stream is drifting back northwards again so we're back to just typically mild and quite wet weather there as we're moving into the middle part of uh, February. GM looks like that so rather uh, rather cool and showery for um, Tuesday when high pressure builds in Wednesday Thursday gives us some colder drier weather with overnight frost a high very quickly slips over towards Eastern Europe by the end of the week low pressure is starting to head back in from off the Atlantic and then here we go again the GM following uh, the GFS turns things very, very unsettled as we get through to the uh, start of the following week. So this is Monday, 10th of February. We're having another battering of uh, cold zonal uh, weather. Strong to gale force, uh, westerly to northwesterly winds, bringing heavy rain and no doubt the chance of snow up in the north too. That's how we look at day 10. Still looking very unsettled and this low pressure out to west of Ireland looks a bit ominous. That could bomb out and give us a very, very stormy spell just a little bit beyond day 10, which I say is Tuesday the 11th of February. And the ECMWF looks like that, rather uh, rather showery and quite cool for Tuesday. Remember, high pressure builds in through middle bar weeks, so it's just drier and colder. The high pressure then begins to slip away uh, to the east. It takes a little bit longer to do so, though. So this is Saturday the 8th of February. And the Atlantic isn't coming in with quite as much conviction with the uh, ECM. Eventually, though, the Atlantic does break down that ridge. So, well, as we move up towards day 10, we're again looking quite stormy. Maybe not quite as stormy here as some of the uh, model output is looking today, such as the GFS and the GM. But nevertheless, it's trending in the same direction, which is very unsettled, low-pressure-driven uh, in the day 7 to 10 time frame. 
and uh, potentially a bit of a stormy side. And for the north, a little bit on the cold side as well with the ECM. Just maybe not quite as extremely so as the GFS and the GM were looking. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which is the 11th of February. 16 members of the, this is from the Icelandic Met Office, by the way, 16 members of the ECM ensembles with lots of load pressure to the north and west, bringing a strong jet stream as well. They look very unsettled. 14 with low pressure centred over just a little bit to our east. That may bring down some slightly cooler air from the northwest. 11, including the ECM control run, but again, look really unsettled. Low pressure and a strong jet stream coming across the Atlantic. 6 with low pressure, just slightly more towards the northwest. A little bit more in way of higher pressure perhaps down to our south. That does include the operational run. Uh, and perhaps the jet stream is not quite as strong with those as well. And only six doing that. So within the ECM ensembles, the, uh, quite a few of the other ensemble members are probably more stormier actually around day 10 than the operational ECM run was. And then four with high, low pressure further to the north and a high pressure building to the south a little bit more. So that's probably the driest option, particularly for southern parts of England. All roads lead to westerlies, though, uh, and it's just a question of how deep the low pressure is and how stormy it is, really, uh, by sort of day 10. And then it's going to two weeks out. This is the 16th of February. 26 members of the ECM ensembles keep this unsettled weather going. Uh, with more low pressure driving in from the Atlantic Ocean. 15 with low pressure centred slightly more towards the north, higher pressure to the south. And then 10 with low pressure uh, again driving in off the Atlantic. So even to the second half of uh, February, the westerlies continue. Finally, the uh, CFS V2, so these are 500 mm of our heights, break it down into week periods. The first weekly period takes us from the 1st to the 7th of February. The coming week has quite a bit of high pressure centred to our south, but it does allow some slightly cooler air to come around the top for a time. The low pressure out in the Atlantic, as we know, by next weekend is going to start breaking down that area of high pressure. So we go through to week two, which is the 8th to the 14th of February, with low pressure being driving in off the Atlantic, particularly to northwestern parts of the country. Still a little bit more influence from high pressure, though, to the south with the CFS compared to what the shorter range models are showing. So even into the second week of February, that wouldn't be overly unsettled for southern and eastern parts of the country, telling us that maybe you have to be a bit cautious about how stormy it's going to get in around a week's time and into that second week of February. Uh, week three is the 15th to 21st of February, still with low pressure out to the northwest, still with high pressure to our south and southeast. If anything, that high pressure is strengthening and sending the jet stream north. That's a very mild scenario, very spring like, but uh, reasonably dry for England and Wales anyway. And then we finish up in week four, which is 22nd, 28th of February, not quite the last day of the month. Remember, get an extra day in February uh, this year. Uh, so with this this one we have high pressure trying to get up towards Scandinavia. Low pressure is out in the middle of the Atlantic. Probably quite unsettled with that. Uh, probably quite mild as well. Obviously, if the high pressure got any further north, was into Scandinavia and started get wind into the east, and we could start to think about going colder. But as it is, there's not enough there to say that the last week of February turns colder. Sometimes the last week of February does go uh, does go cold though in, in an otherwise mild winter. I mean that happened in uh, we talked about this course in terms of January. The January CET uh, mildest January on record is 1916 and um, the February that came after that uh, mildest January on record in February 1916 did turn very cold in the last week of February. So occasionally that can happen but I would think more more likely, unless we get some sort of stratospheric warming uh, type event occurring, I think more likely we probably just go to something drier uh, and probably quite spring-like by day and maybe frostier by night through the last week to 10 days of February. That would be my hunch about what's going to happen there. But we shall see. It's not out of question. We might get a blast of winter in the last week of this winter. Uh, but certainly the first sort of first half of February, anyway, let's say, first couple of weeks are going to be uh, Atlantic driven. 
initially relatively dry and a little bit on the cool side in the coming week and then potentially the second week of February going quite stormy. And if we do go as stormy as some of these charts are suggesting, then we will have to think about the chance of severe gales and um, disruptive weather for the second week of February. Remember, CFS is not going as stormy, though, for that second week of February. So there might be a little bit of uncertainty about that. Maybe we'll get some named storms even in the second week week of uh, February. We shall see about that. Right, that's it for uh, videos for today. Don't forget to Terry Scully. It's February forecast will be released tonight at gasworthies.com. Tomorrow, we're going to start off with Solar Sunday. So very, uh, very exciting day. We only do two or three Solar Sundays through the year at Gasworthies. We've got one of those coming up for you uh, tomorrow. So we'll bring you an update with all of the latest developments with Solar Cycle up number 24. We'll have Gasworthies Study Roundup coming up tomorrow as well and Ensembles Watch in the evening. So um, lots of updates tomorrow. Keep checking back to all of them. With Solar Study that means there's no spring update tomorrow. There's no spring analogs update. That will be back a week tomorrow. Right, that's it for uh, today's videos, though. So thanks for watching.